Toby Price said, uh, I normally like to ride two to three days per week, but I also like to do things that seem like training, but are actually fun, like mountain biking and running. I love getting on the rowing machine, doing gym work. For my core, it's a hell of a lot of fun on a stand-up jet ski on the water instead of doing some crunches on the floor. Um, now, that's all well and good if you're able to go jet ski, uh, riding or racing uh, multiple days a week. Uh, for the rest of you that need to go to work to be able to go riding and racing on the weekend, probably not the most useful information for you. Uh, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Andrew Hammer. Um, I struggled with riding and race fitness for 14 years of racing, and I don't want you to be one of those riders. Three ways to convert Toby's schedule for the everyday rider. First thing that you need to be able to work on, uh, rowing machine, Toby mentioned. Now, not too much about what he does on the rowing machine, so what do you need to do on the rowing machine to help you with your riding? Two types of cardio. There's aerobic cardio and anaerobic cardio. Aerobic cardio is our long distance cardio system that allows us to move at a consistent intensity for a long period of time. Second type of cardio is anaerobic cardio. Anaerobic cardio is being able to work very hard, very intensely for a short period of time, followed by a period of rest or lower intensity. How do you train either of these on the rowing machine? We can train the longer distance cardio system by doing longer rows. Get on the rowing machine for half an hour, 45 minutes, pick a pace and work on holding that pace and intensity for 30 to 45 minutes. To work on your anaerobic energy system, work on interval training on the rower. An example of this, for a 20 minute period, do 30 seconds flat out followed by 30 seconds rest. What you'll find is that the short, sharp workout with more rest is actually able to elevate your heart rate much higher than what the aerobic training is. If you want to see the best transfer from the rowing machine over to your riding and racing, then you may need to make sure that you're hitting both energy systems. Second thing Toby mentioned is gym work, but nothing about what actually gym work consists of. So I can speculate on this. Gym work would consist of getting strong. Toby knows that he has a heavy bike. His bike is weighing over 100 kilos plus his body weight. Um, from what I read, which is about 95 kilos. So he's got a bike at a minimum of 100 kilos and 95 kilos of body weight. That's 195 kilos he needs to wrestle around for three, four hours plus, depending on the type of riding and racing he's doing. Strength work that you can do. Uh, do things like back squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, overhead presses, all with the barbell. The reason you want to use a barbell and use weights is because we can bridge that gap between the 195 kilos that he's wrestling around and the strength that his body has. The smaller and closer we can get that gap, the lighter the bike will feel, the less energy Toby's able to use while he's out riding, which means he can ride harder for a longer period of time. Third thing Toby mentions is building core strength on a stand-up jet ski. So if you're not able to get out on a stand-up jet ski multiple times a week to build your core strength, you need to figure out how to be able to do this in the gym. You can do this in the gym by using multi-joint movements. So one of the benefits of building core strength on a jet ski is you're getting your core to work with your upper and lower body at the same time. Doing crunches in the gym doesn't do that. When you go and ride the bike on the weekend, your core is also working with your upper and lower body. The best way to be able to train that in the gym is using what's called multi-joint movements. So multi-joint movements are things like back squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, where multiple joints are working in one particular exercise. The benefit of this is we're getting multiple muscle groups working together at one time, and that's what's happening on the bike, and that's what makes riding and racing so hard.